So good morning. It's a pleasure to be here today. I'll be presenting some of the studies that we are conducting at the Cognitive and Behavioral Research Center at the University of Coimbra. I'll be presenting some of the research that we um, are doing on the impact of emotion regulation processes in eating behaviors and also in healthy behavior change. To understand eating regulation and difficulties in regulating eating behavior and weight, we need to understand that we are facing this clash between our evolutionary heritage and our modern society. In fact, like other mammals, humans evolved to be optimal foragers in resource-limiting environments during periods of seasonal uncertainty. And so, we didn't need to worry about limiting our food intake because the environment did that for us, facing us with plenty of barriers like dries, predators, and so we developed a see, food, and eat it brain that is not designed for self-restraint. And also, evolution has selected our behavior and our physiological systems to bank surplus energy during times of uncertainty and to compensate in physiological and behavioral terms for energy deficits. But throughout evolution, humans started to manipulate the environment and to maximize food availability and eliminate scarcity. But this was not a win-win situation because now culture has outraced evolution and as we have not yet developed adaptations to cope with the excessive amounts of cheap, readily available, energy-dense food. And so it is not our fault that, but that we find it difficult to resist these kinds of foods because we are still biologically prepared to, to see them and eat them. Also, foods throughout evolution acquired a new range of social and emotional meanings. We use food as a reward, we use food to cement social bonds, and we use food to soothe ourselves and to soothe others in times of distress. And so our appetite systems are now overloaded with multiple functions and with poor regulation. At the same time, in our modern society, physical appearance is emphasized as a central dimension to evaluate ourselves and also as a central dimension for social evaluation. And so this means that physical appearance is often used not as a way to assess physical features, but also as a way to assess social features, such as whether one is accepted, valued, chosen by others, or instead of being criticized, ostracized, or rejected. And in our society, there is this pressure to achieve thinness as being a synonymous of physical and social attractiveness. And at the same time, we, we know that in our society, there is this high stigmatization of overeating and excess weight, despite the fact that we are still evolutionary designed to, to do so, while at the same time uh, offers food as a major source of comfort and soothing. And so these conflicting pressures explain or may help to understand this widespread dissatisfaction and difficulties with body image that we see in our society, especially among women, and have consequences for the way that we interact with food, the way we use food for social and emotional purposes, and for our ability to, uh, to form planned and reasoned behavioral pathways to regulate eating behavior and manage our weight. And so the causes and ways of addressing eating and weight regulation are indeed complex and multi-determined. And despite, uh, if we look at the weight management field, despite the growing evidence that programs that incorporate these compon components, such as dietary behaviors and weight loss, uh, uh, such as the engagement in low-fat, low-energy dense diets, adapted physical activity and behavior change techniques, such as self-monitoring and planning, we are still facing this common problem of relapse. And that is because uh, even though the cognitive strategies and behavioral change techniques are essential, eating behavior and weight regulation and eating regulation have this huge emotional dimension associ associated with it. And so if, we, if you ask a group of people who struggle to manage their weight how they feel, they would often say that they feel depressed, they feel scared, they feel anger, they feel unlovable, they feel unhappy, they feel deeply ashamed. And for all us humans, finding ourselves in this negative uh, state of distress is very threatening, and our immediate response is to try to avoid this negative state. And research has shown that paradoxically, 
Eating and food consumption may be an attempt to regulate and control complex negative emotions. And a particularly important emotion, negative emotion, is shame. Uh, so what is shame? Shame is this multifaceted, self-conscious, but socially focused emotion that is related to the competition that all humans face to, to struggle to feel accepted and valued by the social group. This is a fundamental human need. We need to feel that others approve us, that others want to establish important roles with us, instead of feeling that we are criticized, stigmatized, or rejected by others. And so we feel ashamed when we feel that we have certain personal characteristics, attributes, or behaviors, such as being overweight or overeating, that are seen by others as unattractive, and that might result in being ostracized or rejected by others, which is very threatening for all of us. And we hypothesize, and we have been conducting research on this, that body image may be a particularly important source of shame because, of course, one's body image is uh, an aspect of us that is readily available and readily assessed by others. So shame has these two components, according to Gilbert's biopsychosocial model of shame. Uh, there is this external dimension of shame of how we, we think we exist in the minds of others. And it is often this internalization of the experience of being stigmatized or of belonging to a stigmatized group or, or, or having features that a stigmatized group has, such as obese people. And also shame has this internal component that relates to our own experiences of the self, the way we see, the way we judge, the way we feel, and the way we treat ourselves. So internal shame is associated with a tendency to engage in self-criticism. This means that I don't need others to criticize me, but then I, I, but I uh, start to uh, shame myself in an internal <coughs> shaming process. And I start to see myself as inadequate, or I even start to hate myself. Uh, and I have desires to persecute and hurt the self. But an important question in regard to eating and weight regulation is, are shame and self-criticism useful to bring eating and weight under control? One might thought that the threat and the unpleasantness of shame and self-criticism would somehow be helpful to bring eating under control and to uh, get people on the right track to lose weight. But we hypothesize that shame and self-criticism do quite the opposite. Because uh, according to our model, people often find themselves in this self-perpetuating cycle in which they feel criticized and then they start to criticize them th themselves, which increases negative affect. And then food emerges as a way to regulate this negative <coughs> affect and to escape these negative feelings and thoughts. And we have been conducting a series of studies um, uh, to collect evidence on this model. And we, in fact, we have found that shame and negative social comparisons, namely comparisons that are based on the physical appearance domain, when, when one compares physically with other person and feels inferior, devalued, and attractive as a social agent, are important predictors of body image dissatisfaction. And body image dissatisfaction is a, a widely known risk factor for eating psychopathology. And so these studies have indeed shown that shame and this sense of inferiority are key in predicting eating psychopathology, namely the engagement in rigid dietary rules and uh, pathological dieting to achieve a socially valued uh, body image. And recently we looked at binge eating behaviors and we found that uh, the particular emotion of shame in relation to body image, feeling ashamed of one's body image, is an important predictor of binge eating behaviors. And these studies have been conducted in women from the general population. Uh, and so these studies showed indeed that body image shame, more than overall negative affectivity, is a particularly important negative emotion that predicts the engagement in binge eating behaviors. However, we also know and we've also been finding that uh, negative affect and particularly shame and unfavorable social comparisons do not necessarily lead to difficulties in regulating eating behaviors. 
and that distinct mechanisms seem to underlie this association. And so we, believe, we have been uh, studying uh, that between the relationship between negative internal experiences, such as this sense of shame, of believing that others look down on the self, and unfavorable social comparisons and body image dissatisfaction, and this association between these negative internal experiences with disordered eating behaviors is mediated by key emotion regulation processes, the way people deal with this sense of inferiority and shame. And so we, we found that self-criticism and uh, the tendency to get entangled with these negative internal experiences and believing that they reflect indeed reality and the tendency to avoid uh, being in this state of uh, negative affectivity and negative thoughts are key mediators and moderators on this association between these negative internal experiences and disordered eating behaviors. Uh, and we recently uh, conducted a, a study, a large-scale study, on 2,236 patients, um, not patients, uh, women attending a weight management program at Slimming World, uh, a large uh, commercial slimming organization, studying the impact of shame, self-criticism, negative social comparisons, on, on the contrary, the ability to soothe oneself uh, and to treat oneself kindly in face of setbacks and limitations. Uh, uh, and this association with uh, eating psychopathology, difficulties in regulating eating behavior. And so these measures of shame and social comparison and self-criticism were focused on weight. So people were asked to, to think about how they, uh, their weight and their body image and how they relate to those dimensions. And so we found that the Shame, self-criticism, and negative social comparisons are indeed important predictors of this in eating disinhibition and susceptibility to hunger, but that they have a crucial impact on how people, people negatively feel about their weight. And this uh, negative affect in relation to weight is a key mediator on this association. But we have also been focusing on the positives and we have been collecting evidence on the importance of the ability to self-reassure in, time, in times of distress or when facing setbacks such as lapses or relapses in uh, weight management and accepting negative internal experiences uh, to adopt adaptive actions towards well-being and towards healthy change. And so in a, a study we found that in women from the general population, but especially in patients with eating disorders, shame does not necessarily lead to eating psychopathology and that self-compassion is a key variable mediating this association. And here self-compassion means uh, the ability to direct kind and understanding towards the self uh, when facing setbacks or limitations, understanding that all human, all human beings uh, can fail sometimes, and so understanding these difficulties and setbacks from a balanced, mindful perspective. And so we found that self-compassion fully mediates this association, which may suggest that shame may be an, uh, that self-compassion, sorry, may be an antidote for such feelings of inferiority. Also, we found that in women that present the same levels of body image dissatisfaction, and here we measured body image dissatisfaction as the discrepancy between, between one's real body image and one's ideal body image. And we found that in women that present the same levels of body image dissatisfaction, those that have a higher capacity to accept this negative internal experience without engaging in maladaptive escape or avoidance strategies, present lower levels of eating psychopathology. And here mm -hmm. when, we, when we talk about accepting, it's not a, a passive acceptance. It means uh, being able to, being, ha be, having the courage to accept this negative internal experience, to engage in committed uh, actions towards well-being and towards uh, uh, difficult pathways to deal with this negative uh, experience and to engage in adaptive forms of eating instead of using food as a way to regulate negative affect. Uh, and then we also looked at the relationship between uh, this ability to accept the negative e internal experience and binge eating. 
And we found that this ability to accept one's internal negative experiences in relation to body image buffers against the tendency to binge it in response to negative affect. And so here we found that in women that present the same uh, tendency, a high tendency to eat to deal with negative emotions, those who are able to accept this negative ex experience present lower levels of binge eating behaviors. And so we found that in this relationship between negative internal experiences, uh, this uh, emotion, this adaptive emotion regulation processes can indeed, uh, may have a buffer effect, may have uh, a protective effect against these negative internal experiences and disordered eating behaviors. And recently we also found that these uh, adaptive emotion regulation processes can also predict higher levels of well-being <laughs> in women from the general population and higher quality of life even in the face of uh, these feelings of shame, these fears of being placed in an unfavorable social position and possibly be being criticized or stigmatized by others. And again, uh, we, we looked at these relationships in people struggling with obesity and struggling with overweight, and we found that self-criticism is an important uh, negative predictor of well-being, predicts lower levels of well-being because it increases negative affect in relation to weight. And on the contrary, we found that the ability to, uh, to be able to self-soothe self and to reassure oneself, even when facing uh, setbacks and limitations and perceiving that one has a, a, a excess weight, um, this ability predicts higher positive affect, which in turn predicts higher levels of well-being. So this... Um, this may lead us to, to hypothesize that training people to develop this ability to self-reassurance can really increase how people feel about themselves, can make people feel better about themselves, which in turn translates into higher well-being. So these findings seem to suggest that therapeutic programs focused on eating regulation and weight management should include the, uh, the assessment and should target shame and should target these negative social comparisons and these negative self-evaluations as they may undermine strategies of planned behavior that are necessary to navigate to a healthy lifestyle and weight. And these interventions sh should focus on the development of adaptive skills of emotion regulation that could allow individuals to fa face these difficult internal experiences while promoting healthy behaviors and uh, quality of life. However, to date, the focus on the internal dynamics of shame and self-criticism and on the contrary, self-reassurance and acceptance have not been explored nor systematically targeting interventions. And we are currently uh, developing uh, a new set of exciting studies uh, in which we target these emotion regulation processes in interventions for binge eating and in interventions for obesity to see the effect of uh, helping people to, to develop this courage to engage with the, the difficult internal experience and to um, commit themselves with taking uh, difficult actions but are, that are necessary actions towards well-being. So these new intervention programs should help individuals to identify the function of their difficulties in regulating eating behavior. We believe that they should counter shame, self-criticism and avoidance. They should promote the development of adaptive strategies to cope with difficulties, to cope with lapses, to cope with relapses, and to engage in health-driven behaviors. Enable people to, re to cope with these difficulties in regulating eating behavior in our cu current modern uh, and stigmatizing society. And they should uh, focus on fostering uh, psychological well-being as well uh, while uh, helping people people to manage uh, their weight and their eating behavior. Thank you very much.